Hey there tubers, welcome back. So I just got back from the metal shop. I was picking up some materials for a new order that I've got. It's gonna be a metal sliding door and it's gonna go all the way up to New Hampshire. This is gonna be like one of my doors that has gone the furthest northeast. So let's go ahead and get this material unloaded and kind of get started on this project. So one of the things that I did when I started making these doors is I built a rack that I could put across the top of my truck. These sheets of uh, sheet metal actually come in four foot by 10 foot sheets. So what I would do before is they would actually go in the bed of the truck, wrap over the tailgate, and then actually sit down on the back of my bumper there. And inevitably they'd always get bent. So I made this rack, made it a lot easier. Um, getting them off is actually kind of fun. So <laughs> check this out. Okay. So the straps that hold up the end are really just kind of a little bit more for support because it cantilevers over the back of the truck by about four feet. Once the straps are off, then what I do is I wipe off the sheet metal because it's got an oil on it to protect it from rusting. And when I lay it down onto the concrete, I don't want that oil there, so I want it to rust. So as you see, it slides down the rails fairly nicely and fairly controlled. It's important that you have gloves on when you're working with sheet metal because this stuff cuts like a razor blade. On this second sheet, I'm also wiping down the oil and this one's going to be a little bit trickier because I want this side to be flipped and put onto the side of the first sheet that I just cleaned off. So now that the first sheet is off and on the ground, I can actually start to spray on the solution that I use to help the sheet metal rust. I would love to be able to tell you what this is, but then it might take away some of the uniqueness when I make these doors. Who knows, maybe in a future video, I just might give you the secret solution. So as you can see, removing the second piece and trying to get it flipped can be a little tricky. This is where you really need the gloves. Even through the glove, I think I felt a little cut there, but after checking it, I think I'm all right. When you work by yourself, you can get kind of creative. Okay, so before I actually get started, I wanted to point out one thing first. I recently started a Patreon campaign, and, and this is gonna be one of those reasons why. Um, this is a four and a half inch angle grinder, and it has a metal cutoff wheel on it. At this point, right now, this is the only way I have to cut metal, which is totally fine, and it totally works. However, Prior to this, I actually had a metal cutting bandsaw. It died. So I started a Patreon account hoping that I can raise enough money to actually pick up a compound miter chop saw for cutting metal. So I'm gonna put a link here at the end of this video for my Patreon account. And if you like what I'm doing, I'd love you to go over there and subscribe to that and be a contributor and help me get to the, my next stage of uh, stepping up in the game here a little bit. So. Let's move on. Let's go ahead and get this uh, framework cut and get this door made. Okay, so for the framework of the door, I typically use inch and a half by inch and a half squares tubing. It's got a nice thickness because it's the thickness of a standard door and it's fairly lightweight as far as steel is concerned. So I'm going to go ahead and unload that off the truck now and then we'll go ahead and start measuring and making some cuts. All right, so all the metal is cut for the framework. We're gonna go ahead and get it welded together now. Let's do it. 
The outside framework is now welded together and also the center supports which is here and here. So what we want to do now is we want to add in some support structure for when we hang the door. So like right in here and right in here we're going to put some pieces in that when the sheet metal's on and the hangers are on we can bolt through and then we've got something solid to put into. Also where the handle is going to be we're going to be putting an extra piece in right along these edges so it also has something to bolt through. So let's add the additional supports and let's kind of keep moving forward on this. So this is day three of the sheet metal cook. We're going to see what's underneath here and see if it's where I want it to be. Let's check it out. All right, the sheet metal is cooked enough to the point where I can go ahead and flip it and start working on the design. I'm still probably going to cook it as I leave it overnight again, but at least I can get started on cutting the sheet metal. So let's go ahead and flip this thing. This is going to be a challenge. I got some really good colors that came out of this top section. So I'm really kind of pleased with that. I still want it to go a little bit darker though. But over here in this section, it probably could have gone for another couple days. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and let it dry. And then I'll go ahead and uh, get the design pattern cut into it. And then go ahead and uh, start to re-patina that section. Alright, side one of the door is complete. Now I just need to start to weld that to the framework and our door will start to come together. Okay, so side one is done of the door. So now what I do with all of my doors is I add a inch and a half insulation that is going to kind of help keep down the noise as it slides back and forth. You don't really want that hollow metal sound. So this kind of deadens that. So we're gonna flip it over, we're gonna add the insulation, and then we're gonna do side two. Basically it's drawing out the design, cutting it out, re-welding it, shaping it, to, or cutting it to the right shape and then welding it on as well. And then we get to the hardware. So we're almost done.
All right, so the second side is welded. Now it's time to add it to the back side of the door, trim it up, and close it up. Then we start working on the hardware. All right, so the door's all closed up. We got the front side, we got the back side. Now to do any videotaping of me doing the back side because it's exactly the same as the front side. So if you want to know how I did the back side, go back through the video and look at how I did the front side. Um, now it's a matter of making the hardware. So I need to make two hangers, and that's what the door hangs from. Um, also, I'll need to make the handle, I need to make the track, I need to make the spacers and the door guide. So once that's all done, get it painted, get it attached, uh, then I make the crate. Hey, so this would be a good time to take a quick break and show you. So this weekend, um, a friend of mine was down from Flagstaff and uh, she and I are definitely beer drinkers and uh, she's a beer buddy. Uh, so she brought down like a case of a uh, variety of craft beers. So we're always kind of sharing different craft beers. And so one of the ones that, uh, that I just opened right now, it's called Honey Basil, and it's from Bison Brewery. Now, I'm not sure exactly where that's from. I have to get my other eyes on here. Um, in Ukiah, California. That is U-K-I-A-H. Uh, Ukiah, maybe? Ukia? Ukiah? I don't know. Anyway, it's actually a pretty good beer. And uh, actually, take these back off. I can see my own reflection from the sun coming back at me, going back at you. So right now, everything's kind of blurry. I'm just kind of looking at the big round dot that appears to be the camera. So, okay, anyway, so yeah, this is a good beer. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions about some good craft beers in your area, uh, let me know, because we have uh, this shop out here called Total Wine, and they get a lot of... Uh, uh, beers from like all over the states and imported all over the world. So I'd love to know what is your favorite craft beer and I'd like to like to check it out. So let's get back to work on the uh, sunburst door and try to get this thing knocked out. I got a couple more projects this week to take care of before I mysteriously take off for a week and go to Jamaica. Hardware is done, time to get it painted. The door is complete. The only thing I have left to do is put the sealer on it, which helps inhibit the rust from progressing. And once that's dry, I load it up and I get it shipped out. So the door's done. Yay! Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. I would also like to take this time to give a shout out to a fellow YouTuber, Brandon Lund. 
If you've not found his channel on your own, well, here's a link right here that you can check it out. He's got some great projects going on. Get out there and give him some support as well. If you liked what you saw, then do me a favor and subscribe. If you're already a subscriber and you're looking for a way to help support my channel and the work that I do, then check out my Patreon campaign. At this point, I would like to give a shout out to my Patreon supporter, Judy Boyd Clothier. So until next time, we'll see ya.